Hey guys, it's Megan, and for today's video, I thought that we'd just do something super chill, super relaxing, and just paint something. I keep seeing these paintings on TikTok, and you know what? I really need to get a new hobby because scrolling through TikTok is not the best way to spend your life, but I thought they were cute. They look fun to paint, so we're doing it. For this project, all you need is some paint, some tape, and a canvas. If you don't have a canvas, you can make your own using some cardboard and a few other household items. I'll make sure to link the tutorial down below. Before I started painting, I made a digital mock-up of the painting in Canva. Clearly I didn't copy it exactly, but this just kind of helped to give me a jumping off point. I like to use this technique when doing a bigger project like this that combines a bunch of different references. For the actual painting, find a circular object to trace to create the circle in the center. Then, use another circular object that's a little bit smaller to draw another circle on the inside. After that, use washi tape or a thin masking tape to tape off each section. I used a ruler to help me out a bit, but it's okay if it's not exactly perfect. For the big circle in the center, I used some thicker masking tape. I ripped off small pieces to go around the edges of the circle, then used a few more pieces to fill in the center. Now that the canvas is all taped off, we can finally start painting. In the first section, I did these Spongebob style flowers. I mixed some teal and some blue paint with a little bit of white and created a sort of gradient effect. First, paint a stripe of the darker blue. Next, mix a bit of both colors and paint a stripe of that in the center. Then, do another stripe of the lighter blue, making sure to blend everything. When that dries, we can draw the flowers. I always use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process a little bit. I used Posca pens in a few places in this painting since I already had them and I personally find them a little bit easier to work with than paint, but if you don't have them, you can just use regular paint. These Spongebob flowers are pretty easy to draw. Just draw a small circle for the center of the flower, then draw five small U-shapes around the circle. Connect these U-shapes with curved lines and you're all set. Make these in a few different sizes and colors and then you have your very own Spongebob background. This next painting is something that, again, I saw on TikTok, and I'm not sure if I exactly did it right, but you know, it could always be worse. First, paint the background light blue. I always try to use up my paint before it dries, so that's why you might see me kind of skipping around the canvas a little bit. Next, make light blue blobs kind of randomly on top. Then, add in some dark blue blobs, and to finish it off, use either a white Posca pen or a small paintbrush to draw random lines on top. This is supposed to look like a sort of cartoon water, the key word there being supposed to, because, well, like I said, I tried. For the next section, I painted butterflies. The thing about painting is that, at least in my opinion, it always looks better when you layer the paint instead of trying to like sketch out every little detail. So I started with these really simple butterfly shapes. I drew a circle for the head, an oval for the upper body, and another elongated oval for the lower body. Then I added the wings. I painted around the butterflies with the light blue, then filled in the wings with two coats of orange. I filled in the body with a black Posca pen and used it to add details to the wings. To finish them, I added a few dots of white paint to the outside of the wings. This next section, I filled with those weird rainbows that I keep seeing everywhere. Like it's a rainbow, but it's with a few neutral colors instead of the traditional Roy G. Biv kind of rainbow. I have no idea who started this trend, but I'm kind of here for it. It's cute, I like it. I just picked three colors and did a bunch of little rainbows, switching the order of the colors for each one. I've seen people make all sorts of room decor with these. I think this design is mainly used for wall hangings. Another room decor like that. For this next section, I did cheetah print. This is actually one of the easiest things to paint. You just paint the background tan, do a few darker brown spots on top, and finish it off with some black. I did find it helpful to have a reference to look at though. Does this ever happen to anyone else? Like you'll be doing something and then some random song that you haven't heard in at least 10 years gets stuck in your head? Like I may not be able to remember what I had for lunch yesterday, but you can bet I remember all the Cheetah Girls songs. Anyways, for the next section, I painted it pink and drew these tropical leaves on top. Don't ask me what type of leaves these are supposed to be, I have no idea. I pretty much just drew a normal leaf shape with a few holes in it and outlined it with a dark green. For this section, I painted these lightning bolts, which how I found a lot of these patterns is I just went on Pinterest and I looked up like aesthetic backgrounds, so yeah. But I painted the background a dark pink and when that dried, I just used a white Posca pen to draw the lightning bolts and filled them in with some white acrylic paint since my Posca pens are kind of running out. 
Then I outlined the right side with this peach color and added small dots to each lightning bolt with the black Posca pen. For some reason, these kind of remind me of dragon fruit. I have no idea why. I don't think I've ever actually eaten dragon fruit. Like, I don't even know why I know what it is, but I don't know. Let me know if you've ever tried it. Let me know if I'm missing out. Cow print is actually probably the easiest thing that I've ever painted. I don't know why this is a thing now, but I'm kind of here for it. Although, I saw this on Instagram where it was like, you know, cow print is basically the 2020 version of zebra print, and they're not wrong. Although, I was watching this show called Clarissa Explains It All, which, if you haven't seen it, 10 out of 10, definitely recommend it. But it was filmed in the early 90s, and she had this cow print pillow on her bed. And the moral of that story is that there's a 90% chance that, you know, in 20 years, I'll have a kid and they'll have like a pink zebra bedroom. That's just how it is, you know? I, I don't make the rules. This one's pretty easy too. All I did was paint the background a light purple, because you know I had to have at least one purple section, and drew a moon and some stars on top. If you're trying to paint stars with just the outline, what I do is I'll move my hand the same way that I do when I'm just drawing a normal star, but then I'll pick up the brush in the middle of the star. Uh, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. I guess you could sketch these out if you really wanted to, but I just didn't feel like it. Another one of my favorite, like, visco slash aesthetic patterns is this 3D stars on top of stripes one. I used red, yellow, and blue paint to make the stripes in the background. I found it easiest to paint one color, let it dry, then the next color, let it dry, and so on so that the colors wouldn't mix together. Again, a hairdryer will be a best friend here. For the stars, I drew each one with a white Posca pen. I needed two coats to make them opaque. To make the stars look 3D, I outlined them with a thin black line. Then I put a thicker black line here, here, and here. And here's what they looked like when they were finished. With the paint left over from that, I made tie-dye. I showed this in a back to school video last year. It's really easy. What you do is you paint thick wavy lines of each color. And for this one, it doesn't matter if they mix a little. When all the paint is down, take a clean dry brush and go across the page in a zigzag motion, wiping off the brush in between each line. And that's it! Since the paint's a little thicker on this one, it might take a little bit longer to dry. And in the last section, I did a checkerboard pattern. This is really self-explanatory, I just painted the background white, and used a black Posca pen to make the checks. And I was a little too cocky at first, and I thought that I could do it without a ruler. Clearly, that was not happening, so I gave in and I used a ruler for the rest of the grid. And I colored every other square black and used a little bit of white paint to cover up a couple mistakes that I made. I was originally going to paint sunflowers on top, but apparently I decided that was too complicated. And now comes the best part, which is peeling off the tape. Sometimes the paint doesn't want to cooperate and it gets under the tape anyways, so I use a little bit of white paint to touch it up. I painted the whole inner circle white as sort of a base coat, and filled in the smaller circle with some yellow paint. You could just leave it like this, or you could put a quote in the center. I put the quote, it is what it is, because frankly, that is a mood right now, you know, it, it, that's just, yeah. Now, my handwriting really isn't the best, so instead of struggling to write out the quote, I just screenshot it from the reference that I made, measured the circle, made it the same size, and printed out. Then I cut out the circle and scribbled over the back of the letters with a pencil. This makes a sort of DIY transfer paper. I taped the circle onto the canvas and traced around each letter. To be clear, I don't really advocate doing this for actual drawings, but for a font on a canvas that I'm not selling, I can let it slide. And when you take off the paper, the text should be transferred onto the page. I erased the pencil lines a little to make them lighter, and filled in the letters with white. I outlined them with black to make them stand out a bit more, and then my painting was finally done. Not gonna lie, this did take a little bit longer than I thought it would, it took about 5 or 6 hours altogether which still isn't too bad for a whole canvas. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. And one thing before I go, in my last video, I asked you guys what we should name this seal that I drew. And my favorite name and the comment with the most likes was the name Chonk. So that's his name now, you know, just in case you were wondering. And I will be back with another things to do in your board video really soon. But until then, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. My merch, my website, and all of my other social media will be linked down below. 
And yeah, I love you guys so, so much. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you guys later. Bye.